occupy. In this packet chaser activity, we will create a cyber war. And the objectives of this activity Firstly, we will configure the FTP server. Then we will configure the web server, email server, DNS server, NTP server, and the GPA server. The background or scenario of this activity is uh, we will configure basic server components. The IP addressing configuration is already complete. We will use a services tab on multiple servers to deploy FTP, web, email, DNS, NTP, and GPA services. Now we will move on to part 1. Configure the FTP server. Firstly, we will activate the FTP service. Now we will click on the FTP server on the services tab we will choose uh, FTP then we turn the service on now on step 2 we will allow users access to the FTP server by creating user accounts named Bob, Mary and Mike and then we will uh, add the full permission for these users. For Mary with the password. For Mike, so that is all for part one. So now we will move on to part two. Configure the web server on step one. We activate the HTTP service. Now click on the FTP server and on services tab. I click on HTTP and turn the services on. Now on step 2, we will verify the HTTP service. I click Sally PC then we open the web browser on Sally now we will enter the URL of Cisco.com here and check for the result and hit go so nothing displayed on the web browser. So I will enter the IP address of the server and hit go. And here we have the cisco.com website. You can check for the address table on the top of the guide. The IP address of each device and the question is why would a user be able to browse to an IP address but not a FQDN or an URL that because we haven't configured the DNS server Now we will move on to part 2, configure the DNS server. Step 1, we will activate the DNS service. Now I click on the email DNS server and on the services tab, I click 
l i c k DNS. Now I will create two DNS A records. The first one is email cisco com with the relevant IP address. On name, I enter email cisco com, and on address, I enter the IP address and hit add. Next, we will create the second A record for the web server. And hit add. And then remember to turn on the service. Now on step three, we will verify the DNS service by click on Sally PC and. Open the web browser and then enter the URL of the email or the web and hit go. And here is the, the website cisco.com. And the question: Why is the user able to browse to an FQDN? That because we have just created two DNS A record on step two. Now we will move on to part four. Configure the email server. Step one. Activate the email services. Click on the email server and click on the email service. And then we turn on the SMTP service and POP3 service. Step two: Create email accounts for users. Firstly, we will set the domain name of Cisco.com, and then. We create user accounts with the password. Now on step three, we will configure user email clients. I click on Sally PC, and then click on email. Then we enter name Sally and the email address. The email address. At Cisco.com, the incoming mail server, because we have only one email server, so incoming and outgoing mail server have the same name. And on the Bob PC, we repeat this task of configuring uh, email services on uh, his PC. And then you can test sending email from Sally to Bob. And the question: Why does email service require both SMTP and Bob3 to be activated? Because SMTP is to is for sending email, and Bob3 is for receiving email. Now we will move on to part five. Configure the NTP server. NTP means Network Time Protocol. It's for synchronizing the time for all the network devices on this local network. 
Now step one, we will activate the NTP service by click on the NTP and then we turn on the service and this server will get the current time of your PC, your real PC. And then we will secure the NTP service by set the key of 1 and the password of Cisco123 and all the client or all the network devices will be, should be set this password to synchronize the time from this server. So before moving to part 6, I will explain a bit about the GPOA. GPOA means authentication, authorization and accounting. Authentication means who wants to access the network. Authorization means what is the user allowed to access. And accounting, what did the user do in the network. So in a network, there are many network devices. So if each device has its own database for authentication, so it's very difficult for the administrator to manage all the databases. So a solution is we have a AAA server and all the request are sent to any network device will be sent to the AAA server and then the AAA server will verify for the existence of that uh, credential uh, or the user account it will send back the uh, reply to the network device and to allow the user to access so that is the AAA service and we call the network device in the AAA client and now we will move on to part 6 configure the AAA server firstly we will activate the AAA service so I click on AAA and on this uh, configuration widget, I will configure the client name HQ router. This router is a GPA client with the IP address of uh, uh, like this. So I enter the client name. and the IP and the secret for authentication between the client and the server and then I add a user account on this server for centrally authenticating users on this network and that is all for this activity thanks for watching